Okay, let's uh, move on. We want to make this a little bit more dynamic. So I'm going to take some of these values and I'm going to put them in CSS variables all the way on the top here. Um, to do that, I am going to I'm just going to put it all the way on the top or I'm just going to put it right here and I'm going to type out colon and then root. And that's where we're going to keep all of our valuables, sorry, variables and um, valuables. It's pretty valuable as well. But anyways, uh, we, we're going to be able to control those and read those with uh, JavaScript later on. Um, so the first one I see here is the fretboard height. And it would be nice if we could use that, we, we could change that and we could have the position of, let's say, the the fret marks adjust to the height of the fretboard because maybe we want it to be 400 pixels, maybe we only want it to be 250 pixels wide or high. Um, so let's set that first. And we do that by doing dash dash and then give it the name of the variable. It should be fretboard height. And let's just set it to 300 to begin with here and I'm not gonna give it a unit right now it is 300 pixels right here but we want to make calculations with it later on and if you set a unit like pixels up here you're not gonna be able to make any calculations so instead of right down here I could write a bar to refer to that to tell the CSS is a variable and it's called fretboard height. I could do that, but that's not going to work. Um, let's try to save and see what happens. Okay, it looks all messed up now. It's, uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on here at all. And that's because we don't have a unit on it. If I change this one to pixel up here, we can do that and it's back to normal. But uh, we don't want that, as I said, because we want to use it for calculations later on. So in order to fix that, we can, let me see, we want to make a calculations and and how we do that I can type out CALC for a calculation and then I can take I want to take the value of this variable and I just want to multiply it with one pixel so I'm just gonna go multiply by one pixel uh, I'm gonna save that and it looks as it should so it takes the value of the of this variable and it adds it just multiplies everything with one pixel so the unit pixels is automatically added so that's how we're going to do that for now another thing i want to add as a variable up here is the number of strings we don't use that right now but we will pretty soon so let's add that and right now it's a guitar a six string guitar so i'm just gonna set it to six save that then it would be pretty nice to find out the height of this string. Uh, if I go down here, we can see this is the string. This is the the silver string that we see here. And we gave it a height of 10 pixels, and then we pushed it down 22 pixels. But what if we have a different width of the fretboard? What if we have a different different amount of strings on on the fretboard? Then it should probably be calculated automatically how how far we want to push it down so we should calculate the the top position of the string right now we just set it to 22 pixels and but we want it to be something like we already have one variable here we have the fretboard height and we have the number of strings so maybe we can calculate the top position depending on how wide it is the fretboard or the, how high it is and um, and how many strings we, we have on the fretboard so let's see if we can do that. I'm just going to make a new variable here and I'm going to call it string top position. And then we need to calculate something. So we have the fretboard height. If we divide that by the number of strings, let's see if we can do something like that. So I'm going to take, I want to calculate something. So I'm going to type out this calc, and then I'm going to take the bar, the variable of fretboard height. Oops. This one here. And I'm going to divide it by 
the variable number of strings. Right there. Let's see what happens then. Save it and nothing really happens because we haven't we haven't changed it down here. I'm just gonna copy this and down here I'm just gonna add another one to overwrite it. And string top position like this. And now it goes all the way to the top. Uh, because we want to do the same thing we did before, we wanna add a unit to it and we wanna add pixels to it. So I'm just going to multiply it by one pixel here. Okay, something happened here, but it doesn't look quite right. It pushed it a little bit too too far down. So because we have the whole height of this one, let's divide that by two and see what we get. So we have, let me just drag this out so it's easier to see what we're doing here. Just going to see if I can divide this by two and okay, and we could. So that looks good, but it's still not perfect because we have the string height. We have to, uh, we have the string height and that is, uh, 10 pixels or something like that. So let's first of all actually add a variable with the string height. So let's call that string height. We have to take that into account. And as far as I remember, it's 10. Where is it? It's down here, so let's just add it. And we're gonna do a calculation as well because we want the unit on it, and we're gonna get the variable string height. String height, and then we're gonna multiply that with one pixel again. And then we can get up here and we can we can subtract the half of the height of the string. But let's actually, it's going to be so messy if we, uh, if we type that here, if we have to divide that by two one more time. So I'm just going to make another variable and let's call it half string height. I know it's going to be five, but what if we change the height of the string later on? Then it's not going to be five anymore. So I'm just going to take this, uh, string height variable and divide it by two. And that's going to be calculation, and it's going to be the var that we just declared above, and that will be string height, this one, and just divide it by two. Then we get the half of that. And then we can use that down here. And the way we want to use it is just subtract the half string height, and that is the variable call half string height gonna save that and it doesn't work at all why not yeah it doesn't work because i should place this this one should be placed inside the parentheses here if i say that we can see it almost looks like it works so we can see the strings are evenly spaced out here so let's test that out let's say that we have uh, 400 pixel height and it still looks like that the strings are evenly spaced out uh, I cannot change the number of strings here yet because that is something we have to hook up later with the JavaScript because I have to manually remove uh, let's just try and remove one of the strings here just to see what happens now we only have five strings it looks kind of weird one two three four five that's okay uh, but it's not, you can see the distance between the edge of the fretboard to the first string is smaller than here. But if we go back here and we change the number of strings variable to five, that should adjust. And now it looks better. So that's, that's how we can do that. I'm just going to go back to six strings. I'm going to go back to my index. I'm going to undo this, save it again. We're back to six strings. But as you probably noticed, we also the, the fret marks don't really, they're not really positioned in the middle anymore. So we need to, to take that into account as well. But if I change it back to, to 300 and save it, they're spot on in the middle or almost, you know, I, I just, uh, I just placed them manually and guessed how many pixels. So let's try and deal with the, the single fret marks first. 
we know that the, right now the fretboard is 300 pixels high and and we have we said it's 150 down here the first fret mark this is the double single fret mark we set the top to 150 pixels and then we just moved it up 50 percent of the width of the of the dot that we're placing and um but we already have some variables we can we can use and i'm just going to take the half of the variable where we store the height of the fretboard and that is fretboard height and then just divide that by two because that's what we what we did i'm just going to save and it did not work because i need to add some pixels to it here uh times one pixel and now we're back now i'm going to go up here and i'm going to change this to 400 and see what happens and as you can see they're still right in the middle let's uh, try 350 it looks like it works but we have to deal with the double fret marks as well so let's let's keep it here uh, so we have something to work with uh, that was a pretty easy fix with the single fret marks but let's think about how we can get the double fret marks to work um, I'm gonna make some calculations here as well and I'm gonna make uh, a new variable and I'm gonna call it double fret mark position one uh, And I'm gonna take, I want it to be around, like, let's say 25% down here and 25% up, no matter how many strings and how wide and the height of the, of the fretboard, whatever it is. So let's take the fretboard height. Let's calculate the variable fretboard height. And let's, multiply that by 0 0.25 to get a percentage that looks about right and let's see if we can use this one I'm just gonna copy this gotta take it all the way down here and 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 where is it is right here so top I'm just gonna add another top here and I'm gonna take Actually, I'm going to calculate it because we need the unit and I'm going to take the variable called double fret mark position one. I need a couple of dashes here. Not slashes, dashes. Oh my goodness. And let's multiply that by one pixel. Something happened. I'm not sure exactly what happened here, but uh, something happened. Let me check it out. Yeah, what happened was that I didn't put a semicolon here because I'm stupid, so right there. Now we have it down around 25%. Let's do the same thing to the other one. Um, I will just copy this line. I don't know what's going on, but I will copy this line of code. And on the next line, I'm just going to call it fret mark number position number two and we want 75 instead of 25 so all we have to do is add it down here I am going to copy this and actually I'm going to delete this as well we don't need that anymore because it works and I'm going to delete this and I'm going to set put this instead and that will be the top I think I have a caps lock on and it's position number two and that does not work it doesn't seem to be working so yeah there's a reason that this doesn't work um we're multiplying by 0 0.25 and i'm adding a pixel unit down here but i noticed that uh, this should not be 50 percent i'm gonna set it to minus 50 percent and that will pull them up where they will belong so as you can see that pulled them up uh, here to the middle and now it has a height of 350 pixels so let's change that to 400 and it changes accordingly they are always in the middle of the fretboard let's try 250 just to see 
and test it out and it still works pretty good um, but let's test it a little bit further let's go ahead and say we want it to be 350 pixels wide and we want only four strings because it's a base now um, now the strings are spaced out but we need to go back to the HTML and remove the last two strings here I'm just gonna move this select this and get rid of it and save it and now you can see that it it looks like this instead we can we can change the fretboard height one one more time to 400 and yeah it um it's evenly spaced out and we are ready to move on to the next phase which is uh, javascript where we will make it even more dynamic and we will add the um, the dots with the node names so when you hover over the the fretboard you can see the names of the notes where you hover and another thing we're going to do is uh, all of these divs all of these strings and notes frets we're going to create those dynamically with javascript as well join me in the next video